Hi, and welcome back to the Blue Screen Brothers. Uh, we are still diving deep into the graph for dummies, uh, and I have gotten Marius uh, back uh, to talk uh, more about uh, MS Graph. Hi, Marius. Yes, hello. It's been a long time since last time. Yeah, a really long time. <laughs> <laughs> Is that Led Zeppelin song or something now? I think so. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Been a long time. <laughs> uh, after last session, I was actually just considering that you show me a web interface, but usually when I'm working with PowerShell, I never use web interface except when I'm in the Azure CLI uh, mm -hmm. directly. So, so is this something we have to do in a web interface or are there options? No. Exactly. So this makes little sense to actually do in a web interface at all, actually. It's just... It's very easy to sit here and show things through the web interface, but uh, usually that's not how you interact with the graph. Instead, okay, you yeah. use, um, well, Python, PowerShell. Well, not always PowerShell, right? I'm a yeah. big fan. So yeah. um, I'm going to show in PowerShell. Yeah. Uh, you can even use uh, like Postman or other kinds of uh, REST API um, tools. Um, but let's use PowerShell. So um, we're already signed in. I uh, showed that last time. Um, let's say we want to have these users and we want them in PowerShell. Yeah. So uh, I have PowerShell somewhere. No, I don't. So let's start it here. Uh, in PowerShell, what you would um, um, want to do is use invoke rest method which is uh, the simplest means of working with the graph. Let's start by defining our URL like this. Um, if we now were to simply try to call the URL, we would, of course, get an invalid authentication token because mm. we haven't provided any authentication whatsoever. Um, that's what we have here. Yeah. So we, we, we talked about this um, in the last episode. Uh, this contains my, uh, my session, essentially. Um, and we'll get into how we can establish this session also in PowerShell. Um, but let's, uh, let's store it. Uh, did, I, oh, how, did I mess my... Yeah, there, yeah. there I am. So uh, let's store this, uh, this token uh, for now, like this. Uh, Short and sweet. Um, <laughs> Why didn't you type it? <laughs> no, exactly. Yeah. Um, so, so this token um, must be sent in a special uh, authorization header. So the way we, we do it is, is that we can just say header header uh, equals um, authorization. That's like a default HTTP header. Uh, we also we we send it as a bearer token, and then token like this. So this is a hash map, meaning or a dictionary, meaning that we this this uh, will tell invoke rest method to send authorization equals bearer space and then this long token. Yeah. Uh, and that's the same thing that we can also see in our browser. So if we go to uh, network here, clear everything and just run. You will actually see that here you will see the, the user's endpoint like this, the, the request URL that we, uh, that we are requesting when just clicking run query is this same URL as we type here. Um, but we send this authorization, bear space, and then the token. So it's the ah. same, same HTTP header. So you are now mimicking the same yes. process in from 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 PowerShell. Yeah. Correct. So now, if I take my invoke REST method and just add uh, headers, header, whoop, I get yeah. the result. And what is very useful when using invoke REST method is that this actually um, it it, uh, it treats the um, the response from the graph as JSON and parses it. So when I just, if I do like this, just get the result into a variable, uh, I can then actually just type value 
and I will get everything. So this is now client side, and I can just say select ID or user principal name and do whatever I want because now I get got all the information. I can count them. All of these things that I do now happens just in my PowerShell, and I have everything offline essentially um, yeah, course, after yeah. just yeah. getting everything here. But yeah. the, the diff counting, selecting, all of those things um, can also be done in um, in the graph. So graph side meanings or server side on Microsoft side, meaning that you don't need to get um, 20,000 users if you simply want to count how many users match a certain result, for example. So there's many different options you can do there to increase performance if there are very spe specific things that you want to do. But, but does uh, this actually means that I have to use the browser to get access to run a graph from PowerShell? No, not oh. at all. Right. So um, um, I think I have to prep a bit more just to um, to have the um, uh, correct lines of code ready. It's, it will be boring to look at me creating an app registration and uh, um, failing yeah, so seven that, that's tries where before successfully created. Yeah. Yeah, so yeah. that registration comes in when you are going to use it as a uh, usually ordinary yes. command line. Yeah, yeah you, usually yes. It doesn't yeah. necessarily have to, but um, but yes. So you, you can use something called resource owner password credential, uh, meaning that you use a username and password, essentially. Um, or you, you can do things like, let's say I have the AZ. Um, so this is the Azure uh, CLI. I have the yeah. AC command. Yeah. So I can now type AZ login. So this will now redirect me to, to a web browser pop up. Yeah. So I will get the AZ. Um, yeah, let's actually add this allow no subscriptions just to get a valid session like this. Yeah. So uh, now this is uh, my my default session, uh, and I can type AZ account help uh, or something, not help, but something else. Uh, AZ, I don't know. Uh, dash dash help. <laughs> yeah, so, so you have the same thing as signed in user and things, right? So um, um, where essentially show. Um, where, where, where this will also return the same same types of data, just as not processed JSON, um, but yeah. um, it's the same thing that you get from uh, from uh, the Microsoft Graph. But you can also now, um, when using AZ account, um, and I should have prepped this a bit more. Um, Sorry when... about that. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, you have this get access token. Yeah. So so when I click or type AZ account get access token, uh, this is one access token that I'm getting. But this yeah. is for another resource. That's difficult to see here. But do, if you analyze this, you will see that this is for the REST API, the, yeah. the, the Azure Resource Manager API. Yeah. But I can instead, um, if I just... Uh, uh, want some uh, some uh, um, information about this here? You can see I can type resource type Microsoft Graph. Yeah. So this is just a, like a quick and dirty method of getting an access token to the Microsoft Graph instead. Yeah. Uh, as the signed in user, so mm -hmm. we can actually now see that um, uh, if if we take this this value here. Yeah. Um, of course, we can extract it and everything using PowerShell. We can look at it in jot.ms. Yeah. Jot you will see that it has a few scopes, like user read, write all, yeah. and group read, write all. So there are certain things that you can do, but you cannot modify the scopes through Azure CLI. So, but, no. so, so you will, if you can do with these, then that's a very quick and easy method of uh, being able to do certain things. So yeah. if, if we take this value here, 
just say token equals this convert from JSON. Then I will get token as a as yeah. a, an object in PowerShell. I have token dot access token. So this is the same thing as when we did this whole long thing way up here, where we build this built this token here. Yeah. So now the token is a bit different, so I can type dot access token instead. Um, but I build the same type of header, and then if I now take the um, the um, invoke rest method with the header, you can see this also works. Yeah. So now now I have actually have used an access token that I've gotten through Azure CLI instead as my yeah. user. I have never typed any password or anything in PowerShell. It used when I clicked AZ AZ login, it did this kind of browser redirect thing going to localhost. So yeah, you um, can create a value value that yeah. will expire in in yes. a, a yeah. relative short time. So yeah. Correct. So you, um, you don't need to save any secrets in your scripts when you're doing it. Exactly. But it also is not really that good for running headless, or meaning that you can you cannot store store this method in a scheduled task, for example. That doesn't really work because it needs to pop up this browser and you need to click something. Yeah. So um, I think uh, <coughs> the ne the next episode uh, will um, will um, show how to do this in like a full script that you can just click and run and it will get an access token and do something towards the graph. Yeah. Excellent. Cool. Yeah. Cool. Cheerio. Cheerio.